If you look on the right side of my screen, you're going to see a scoreboard, and the scoreboard is actually going to update the Y coordinate for my player location whenever I'm moving around. Now, obviously, this is just an example. You can add in whatever you want, but in this video, we're going to dive into how to easily create per player scoreboards within your own Spigot plugins. If you're new to Java, then you might struggle to follow along with my Minecraft tutorials. Don't worry, though, I have a complete Java course that you can watch for free by signing up for a free trial of Skillshare. This course has around 50 videos and nearly four hours of content that are all designed for the beginner. So if you're new to Java, then this is the perfect place to start. Go ahead and click on the link in the description or in the pinned comment to sign up for free. Now, there are a number of different APIs we can use in order to make this much easier than directly working with the Spigot API. And one that I found that seems fairly simple to use is called Fastboard. And the link to this page can be found in the description down below. So you can easily scroll down and copy the dependency as well as the plugin right here to install it with Maven. So I've already done that for my project here. As you can see, I do have my dependency right here. And then I pasted in my plugin for Maven right here. So after that, I just simply rebuilt with Maven and now I have access to this dependency within my plugin. So now within a utility folder, I'm going to make a new class and I'm going to call this scoreboard. And within here, I'm going to make this implement listener. Of course, if you're going to handle listeners elsewhere within your project, you don't need to directly do this. Then I can create a constructor called scoreboard. And I want the first argument to be the instance of my main class, which is going to be called runoff key tutorial. I'm going to call this plugin. Of course, if your main class is called something else, then you're going to want to name your variable something else. Now here I could say bucket.getPluginManager.registerEvents, passing in the listener first, which is this, because this class implements listener. Then afterwards we can pass in the plugin. Now what I want to do is I want to create a private map that's going to hold each individual player's scoreboard. So I could say private final map. We're going to import this from Java Util. The key is going to be a UUID, which we have to import. And then the value is going to be fastboard, which is the dependency we just installed. I'm going to call this variable boards, and I'm going to assign this equal to a new hash map. Now I'm going to listen for whenever a player joins. I'm going to create a new scoreboard and apply it to this map. And I'm also going to listen for whenever a player quits. I'm going to remove the scoreboard and remove it from the map. So here I could say at event handler, public void on player join. Of course, you can name your variables whatever you want, but the actual argument here must specifically be named player join event. We can first gain access to our player. So I just say player player equals event dot get player. Then we want to create a new instance of fastboard. So I can say fastboard. I will call this board and I will assign this equal to a new instance of fastboard passing in the player object. Now I'm going to create a string here, which is going to be the title of the scoreboard. So whatever is on the very top of the scoreboard, basically, I can say string title equals. Now here I'm going to add in double quotes, and then I'm going to add in and C and L for bold light red text. And I'm going to simply just say welcome. Of course, if you wanted to, you can add on the player's name here. You can make this whatever you want. Then afterwards, I'm going to say board dot update title. And here I can now pass in chat color dot translate color codes, passing in a single character, which is going to be the and symbol. So these and symbols right here for and L and and C are going to then be translated for the chat color codes that I'm sure you're all familiar with. So here I can pass an and, and then for the second argument, I can pass in title. Then I can say boards dot put passing in player dot get unique ID and then the actual board variable. Now, of course, whenever we're adding something to a map, whenever a player joins, it's very important that we're also removing that object from that map or from that collection whenever the player leaves. So for example, I could say at event handler, public void on player quit, and then we're going to listen for the player quit events. Of course, this event will be fired whenever a player leaves the server. So just like the player join events, we're going to start by getting access to our player object from this event. And then we're going to get the board that was potentially removed from our map. So I could say fast board, we'll call it board, and assign this equal to boards, which is our map dot remove passing a player dot get unique ID. Now, of course, as some of you know, Whenever you're calling the remove method on a collection, if it did exist, then it will be then returned into this object right here. But if it didn't exist, it is then going to be null. So I could simply say if board is not equal to null, then that means that we now have access to the actual scoreboard or we can then call board dot delete. Now I want to create a private variable in here. We're just going to actually update everything and we're going to use a var args argument to pass in any number of strings. So here I can say private void update board. We're going to first pass in a fast board instance called board and then a var args variable called lines for each individual line. And one thing I want to do is I first want to loop through every single individual line and translate the color code to make sure our and symbol color codes are going to work correctly. So there are multiple ways to do this. A very simple way is to use a standard for loop. So for int a equals zero, while a is less than lines dot length. 
I can now increment A. And then within this, I can now say lines index A equals cat color dot translate color code, passing in the and symbol, and then lines index A. So essentially, we're just reassigning that exact index on the lines of our arg array to now have the correct color codes so everything is the correct color. Now, after the for loop, I can now say board dot update lines, which also takes in var args, so we can simply just pass in lines. There's only a couple more things we need to do, so I can go into the main file here, and I'm now going to create a new instance of the scoreboard passing in this, because of course, within the scoreboard constructor, we're expecting an instance of one-off case tutorial or whatever the name of your main plugin is. And one more thing I want to do is I now want to actually pass in whatever strings we want right here using the update board function. And if you're going to be having your scoreboard update specifically on certain events, then it would be ideal for performance to only update whenever those events occur. But in some cases, it makes more sense to update your scoreboard every second, two times a second, et cetera. So we're going to go ahead and do that here. Within the constructor, we can say plugin.getServer.getScheduler.scheduleSync repeating task. So this is going to schedule a certain function to be ran every so often. And the very first thing we need to pass in is going to be our instance of our plugin. Then we're going to have a function here, which is what is actually going to be ran every so often. We then have a delay, which I want 0L for a long value. So this will basically just run instantly. And I'm wanting this to update every 10 ticks, which is going to be twice per second. Now, whatever's inside this function right here is going to be what is ran every single 10 ticks. And I essentially just want to loop through all the values of our boards map right here and actually update those. So here I can say for fast board, board, which is going to be looping through boards dot values. Now within here, I can call the update board function passing in the board and then any number of arguments I want. So for example, I can have an empty line and then I can have and a online colon. And then for another line, I could say and C and then plus buckets dot get online players dot size. If this tutorial is helping you, then consider helping me by leaving a like. And if you want to see more tutorials like this one, then subscribe to the channel. It's free and you can unsubscribe at any time. Now for another line, I can add in another empty string, which is basically just going to be a separator. And then I can say and a y chord for the y coordinates. And then of course I can now say and c. I can now add on board dot get player. So we do have access to each individual player throughout this loop dot get location dot get block y. So now I'm going to go ahead and compile this. And obviously everything you want to add to your scoreboard can be customized. You can add whatever you want to make sense for your individual use case and your individual plugin. This is just an example to show the current players online and the current Y coordinate. All right. So I've now joined my server and we see the scoreboard on the right. And as I move around the world, we're going to see the Y coordinate update depending on the Y coordinate of my exact player. So of course you can add whatever you want. This is just a simple example, but at this stage you should have the basic fundamentals down to create your own scoreboard system for your own plugins. Do you want to learn even more about Minecraft plugin development? Go ahead and click on this playlist you see here. And if you have any video requests, feel free to leave them in the comments.